our previous video, we took a look at the problem that I've just quickly displayed here for a moment. And we took the information from that problem, the, there's a lot of it here, and we constructed a table to help us break the information down. And then we used that table to get ourselves a set of constraints that define the feasible region. What we're going to do today is we're going to use these constraints and we're going to graph this over here. So, because I've got all the information from this problem that I need, I'm going to take this problem away. Now, the first thing that you'll notice is I've already graphed the first quadrant section of our graph. The reason why I did that is because we've got the constraints that x has to be equal to greater than zero and y has to be equal to or greater than zero. This tells me that it has to be in this positive region of the graph, so in the first quadrant. If you think about the problem, the number of tins of super elite and power green have to be positive. So it makes sense that it has to be in here. In order to be able to graph each of these constraints, we actually need to take a look at this inequality that we've got here and graph the line as if it's an equation. So we actually have to graph 30x plus 10y equals 170 as our first step for the carbohydrates, which I'm going to do now. Next, I have to do the same with the protein. So I take this inequality and I graph the equation of it. So the 30x plus 30y equals 330. And then we do the same thing with the vitamins equation. So now what we do is we look at each boundary line individually, each constraint individually, and look at where the feasible region needs to lie in relation to that boundary. So we know with the x is greater than zero and y is greater than zero that those two boundaries, it has to be greater than it, so it has to exist somewhere in this first quadrant. Then we look at total carbohydrates, which is represented by that line there. In this case, we're saying it's greater than the 170. So the area that that feasible region must lie in is this side of that boundary line. So it can't be in either of these three regions here, but it could be this big region here, this region here, this one, or this one. So then we look at the next boundary line, the protein. That line can be seen just here and it's going to be less than this line, less than that 330. So that means it has to exist somewhere this side of this line. But we also know that it can't be outside of the first quadrant because of those first two boundaries, and it has to be somewhere that side of this boundary line. So the only places that that is, is here and here. This side won't fit the protein line, and this side won't fit the carbohydrate line. Finally, we look at vitamins. The vitamins line is represented here, and it's got to be greater than this line. So that means it has to be this side of this vitamins line. Now the only space that meets all the other restrictions or constraints, as well as this vitamin constraint, is this area in here. And we refer to this area as our feasible region. which can also be called the simplex. Now, if we take a look at back at our original problem, the reason why we did this was to try and work out what combinations of power grain and super elite food could an athlete buy that met the diet restrictions or diet requirements they had. Now, if we look at this, we're going to need to buy whole numbers of cans or tins of these products. So our solution have to be discrete solutions within the feasible region. So what we can now do is we can go and find where these discrete solutions exist within this feasible region. So one exists, for example, at the vertex here, which would be four cans and eight cans. 
It also exists at this vertex, where it'd be four cans and five cans. And this third vertex here, which is eight cans and four cans. And it can also exist within the feasible region. So I'm going to go and find them all within this feasible region. So what I've done now is I've identified where all of our feasible combinations, possible combinations of power grain and super elite food that will fit our problem requirements, our diet requirements. So how many are there? Well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten possible different combinations that the athlete could buy. Now, in our next video, we're going to have a look at what we call optimizing the solution. Now, often we want to not just pick any combination, we want to optimize it. So here we might want to try and save as much money as we can. So we might want to have a look at what combination is the cheapest. And we're going to talk about that in our next video.